Well, it's, it is, of course, basic research, but we have devices and device applications in mind. And this is where our interest really coincided with Colia, because we, we end up in having, uh, immediately when we try to make devices and, and, and uh, try to do uh, something uh, with small-scale superconductivity, we end up being in non-equilibrium. And, and this is the thing that we have been working in, in, in my group and my earlier group for, for a very long time already, like close to 20 years. And this is a, a refrigerator for electrons. And, and the principle in, the, in this case is extremely simple. So, so you, you put uh, a superconductor, a standard BCS superconductor like aluminum, uh, in contact with, with a normal metal but through an uh, oxide barrier, so through a tunneling barrier, uh, and, and by applying a chemical potential difference between these two conductors, uh, just applying a small voltage across, which is of the order of the energy gap of the superconductor, what occurs is that, that electrons are transported from normal metal to the superconductor, and, and, and what, what naturally occurs then is that you create a non-equilibrium population of quasi-particles in the superconductor. So, <clears throat> although it is a very useful effect to cool down the electrons here, I mean, there's a, there's a cooling power which you can calculate in, a very, in very, very simple terms by just integrating the energy that you, you, you get out from the normal metal, uh, I mean, assuming that the normal metal stays in, in, in uh, equilibrium, and which is in fact the case in most of the time because the electron electron relaxation is fast. However, you create really this non-equilibrium po population in, in, this, in this superconductor and this is something you want to get rid of because, because as we know, superconductors are, first of all, they are very poor conductors of heat in, as such in, in terms of electronic heat conduction and also the relaxation is very poor. However, this can be really used in actual instruments or in, in actual devices you can cool electronic uh, conductors, I mean this is kind of a prototype, a small one, one micrometer scale, where you cool the electrons in, in this small wire here uh, from say 300 millikelvin down to 100 millikelvin, so back to, by a factor of 3. In recent experiments we have been able to improve this, uh, I mean we can make much, much larger devices, really practical devices in this respect. But the principle is indeed blowing up the hot electrons and creating a trouble in the superconductor. Another <coughs> device which, which shares the same, same uh, problem and which we have been working a lot on is, is a, um, a so-called single electron turnstile. It's just, it's basically the same thing. So, so well, uh, what you have is, in this case, a smaller device. Uh, again, you have a normal metal connected to superconductor with tunnel barriers and once you apply a chemical potential difference, well, in this case there's a charging energy, so this potential here depends on the actual number of electrons on this island. But nevertheless, what happens is that you have the same, same game here and you, uh, you, can, uh, you, you, you can get a useful effect, namely you can transport one electron per, per gating period through this device and you can, you can hope for creating a single electron uh, turnstile, single electron current standard out of this, where one electron per, per driving cycle is transported through. But once again, I mean, maybe this is not the best figure to demonstrate this particular effect, but, but still what happens is that once you, once you have the tunneling, you, you create non-equilibrium in the superconductivity, and, and, and this, is, this has turned out to be the main obstacle in, in realizing this uh, standard. Although you see here from the very early experiments, you can see that, that by, by running this very, very simple device, it's a superconductor, normal metal superconductor, single electron transistor with a gate voltage, you can see that we can, uh, we can cre create current plateaus at multiples of electron charge times frequency up to many, many steps. And, 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 and indeed, as you will see, the accuracy is already on the level of 10 to minus 4 or 10 to minus 5 in, in, in the transfer. So in all these things, we are really worried about uh, non-equilibrium quasi-particles. So uh, let me uh, then go to uh, 
to uh, to to the experimental uh, uh, reality of, of what is what is the situation. So uh, in 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 aluminum, typically you would you would expect that uh, that if you just lower the temperature, the the density of quasi particles would drop exponentially. So the simple PCS uh, result is that that uh, is is this. So so the 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 uh, density would drop, but in, in most of the experiments, or say in all experiments, what happens is that, that at, at the temperatures around uh, one uh, fifth of one, uh, well, about one tenth of the, of the TC, the quasi-particle population saturates. This is data from an experiment in Delft a few years ago, where they used an aluminum-based kinetic inductance detector and the electron uh, the, and the quasi-particle density, it, 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 uh, it saturated about 150 millikelvin temperature, which is still on the level that you have, you have like tens of thousands of quasi-particles in, in, in a kinetic inductance detector, which is not really a nano-sized thing, but it is a, it is a thing on the chip, which, which is uh, several square hundred microns uh, size. But, but nevertheless, this is really the situation in, in general. We worked a lot in order to decrease this quasi-particle density. We made really uh, a lot of efforts over the past years. And, and, and what we uh, could do by, by really careful filtering, careful design on, the, on these electronic chips, uh, we, could, uh, we could really get to the CTS where the, where the quasi-particle density in superconductors is very small. And the way we really verified this was that we were making single electron transistors on which we could monitor by another uh, single electron transistor. So again, this is the third style type of device, superconducting least normal island here, and we were monitoring the terms of single electrons into the island and out of the island. So this is kind of a typical trace on the time scales of seconds where you can see that electrons go out and in on this uh, island one by one, and now you can really by reading by another detector you can just uh, test about how many quasi particles you have on the island if you just look at the uh, average rate of this uh, of this uh, of these events occurring on, on this on this particular device so it, it simply relates the quasi particle number directly to the rate through the density of states at the Fermi level in the uh, in the in the superconducting material and and then and and to the to the to the contact what, what is gamma hmm? what is gamma Gamma here. It is. It is just. Uh, it is the the average rate of these jumps oh, between. Okay. okay. So from that, we really concluded that by what we had done, we got so low rates at the lowest temperature. So this is a collection of data. I'm not going through all the details of it, but it tells us that that the rate of this tunneling is so low that we can, we can deduce a record low uh, density of quasi-particles in, in the superconducting lease of this device, which were extending a few tens of microns away, which means that we really had a, a kind of quasi-particle-free uh, lease most of the time in, the, in this experience. So uh, this tells us that we, indeed we can get to the situation where the quasi-particles are indeed not there. So you can. This is another device we measured. It's a so-called uh, trap of uh, signal electrons in, with the same tunnel junction configuration. And we could really see that there are really there are no jumps over several hours of time, which means that the, 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 it, the systems are really quasi-particle free. But now comes the uh, stage when when we have uh, when we really uh, started to interact with Coulomb. Uh, so it is the question of not this quiescent quasi-particles, but the situation when you drive the system to non-equilibrium and you inevitably create quasi-particles. So in a practical uh, system, it looks like this. You have a, a, uh, uh, a normal metal here, which could be in this uh, turnstile, the normal uh, island, or it could be in this, in this refrigerator, the, the cooled normal metal here. And you push just uh, electrons through the tunnel barrier, and you create a population of non-equilibrium quasi-particles in, in the superconductor. 
So they really uh, they they relax very poorly due to the uh, due to the uh, slow recombination rate, as I will show you, and also they can't diffuse well in, in the superconducting. So what we what one conventionally does, one makes kind of uh, uh, normal metal traps, which are either directly connected to the superconductor or connected through some kind of barriers. So there is a trade-off always because if you would put a direct contact close to this uh, to your actual uh, actual contact here, then uh, what happens is that you will have inverse proximity effect and and, and the properties of this junction itself are affected. Strong. So, so it is a kind of a very practical question, but but it, it still has no perfectly satisfactory solution for the moment. So I, I can show you here just some relatively recent data on this thing. So w when uh, when one makes different types of uh, geometries of such structures, so here is a here is a uh, is a Typical turnstile structure, so there is a normal island, superconducting leads, but we did it in different geometries. So, in some cases, we made it intentionally very bad. We made long superconducting lines at around this uh, normal island here, which means that the electrons or the quasi particles have very hard time to, to, to relax outside. So, it is depicted by this blue thing here, and now we can, by just measuring the the transport properties there at the junction, we can see that the quasi-particle number is increasing when we increase the uh, rate of pumping in this in this uh, turnstile germ. So we just really populate the superconductor with quasi-particles. We can improve the geometry and we made it uh, in two steps. So we can make just the line shorter here uh, and, and we see that the quasi-particle number as a function of this pumping frequency is not increasing that fast anymore. And the ultimate solution in this uh, respect was really making a wide opening superconducting lead with quasi particle traps in the near, ne normal quasi particle traps in the neighborhood, which already gives us quite a good answers, uh, quite a good results. So, so the quasi particle number stays relatively low. And respectively, this me meant that if you look at here, what our real goal is to get, uh, get currents which are close to the EF, as I told you, in this. In this pathological geometry here, you can see that the current depends really on the bias voltage across here. It's not really nicely flat, uh, and, and, and you have no uh, well-defined quantization of the current. Whereas here, in this, uh, in this op more optimized case, in this case, you can see that the current is really close to the expected, uh, uh, say, the quantized step of e, e times f within 10 to minus 4 or so. So, but there is another, there was a, this is a, a thing that uh, concerning this uh, creative quasi particles, there's a very <coughs> important thing which, uh, which occurred and which is still very largely unsolved. And, and this is, a, this is the uh, issue that, uh, that we discovered first in, in the case of, uh, of this refrigerator, but more recently there have been also experiments in Japan on, on this kind of a turnstile uh, device where, where, where the similar observations have been, uh, have, have been made. <coughs> Namely, uh, and, and this was indeed a work where, uh, where we uh, collaborated closely with Nikolai, and, and, and we kind of got a, uh, in this case, up till now only a qualitative uh, picture of what is going on. I must also say that this is, this is something that has been uh, very nice from the point of view that since, although Kolya is not anymore with us on, on, this, on this topic, uh, uh, I, I, am, I have now the uh, very nice opportunity to uh, collaborate with, uh, with uh, Sasha Melniko and Ivan Haimovic, who, 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 uh, who, who are former colleagues of, of, uh, of uh, Kolya on, on, on non-equilibrium superconductivity and qualities. So what was done in this experiment was that that uh, that uh, a uh, really we we apply again a bias chemical potential difference here to to create uh, to create a uh, cold region in, inside this uh, small island here. Uh, so however, this this 
refrigerator is operating suboptimally from from the uh, point of view of uh, this simple theoretical expression that I I presented to you in the beginning. <coughs> However, when we apply a uh, a really modest uh, perpendicular magnetic field on this structure, what happens is that that uh, if you if you look at here on this uh, on this graph here. If you apply this magnetic field and we see how much the temperature of this uh, central island here drops uh, in the optimum cooling point, we see that, that there is a dramatic effect by improvement, not quite by a factor of two, but almost so. So when we start from a temperature of about 300 millikelvin, it cools initially in a zero magnetic field only by about 100 millik, but, but in the case of, of this uh, optimum field, we can we can uh, we can cool it by about 160 millik, so almost 100 millik. So the the picture that that was uh, was just uh, uh, first uh, what what is kind of a very phenomenological and very uh, plausible picture is that that what happens is that when you apply the small magnetic field, you create vortices on 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 aluminum, and vortices. Similarly to, to the normal metal in general, they, they act as, uh, as uh, centers for, for trapping the, uh, the excess quasi-particles in, in this superconductor. So when you increase the magnetic field, of course, the density of, uh, of these vortices increase and, and you get further improved uh, performance for, of this thing. But eventually, when the magnetic field increases uh, uh, large enough, then the vortices start to penetrate close to these junctions here, and and uh, and uh, there is uh, once again there is the effect of uh, kind of inverse proximity effect. Uh, the the BCS uh, uh, gap, BCS density of states is is uh, is uh, smeared, is destroyed near near this junction, which is the active part of the device. So then after that magnetic field, the operation is is uh, is again. Uh, uh, degraded. So this is, I mean, uh, we couldn't even make it into PRL at that time with this, but I think this is a it is a important, still partly uh, and quite largely unsolved uh, th thing. Uh, um, uh, although it, it is now well established experimentally, and and with the help of uh, Kolya, we could really get at least. Uh, a very uh, nice, uh, 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 well, I would say semi-quantitative understanding of how, how what, what is going on there. So another important thing which to uh, Kolya, of course, uh, was something which he thought that it is, uh, it is just standard, everything is done already, but, but applied to experiments, it, 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 it uh, triggered his interest to some extent, was really looking at uh, at at, at uh, recombination of uh, quasi particles in 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 a superconducting island. So we did an experiment several years ago, which was uh, was uh, was done in a way that we had a now not really a lead of a superconductor, but we had a, a small uh, small we could say a bar of uh, of superconductor, an island of superconductor, relatively thick in this case. And, and it was again tapped with several tunnel probes here. So in this case, we could just by uh, by injecting uh, uh, injecting uh, quasi particles in this to this island, uh, we could we could uh, we could create their kind of a spatially uniform population of them, and we could we could measure then the relaxation. It's not any more diffusion to any trap or anything. It was just bare superconductor where where the only only a way of relaxing the quasi particles is in fact uh, as far as we can understand is just by uh, recombination of, of the pairs and what we found is in this experiments was that that okay this is not maybe the slot which is made in a most illustrative way but this is just showing that when we lower the temperature below the tc of the superconductor it's again aluminum we can see that in the superconducting state the power that you need to 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 raise the temp electric temperature to to a certain level is uh, is decreasing uh, is decreasing well it's more or less exponentially decreasing and and 
compared to the normal state, this power is already at the temperature of about a third of the TC. It, it is about 100 times smaller than in a normal. Well, it, it, it appears that this can be, uh, this can be uh, really captured relatively well by an expression which, uh, in fact, Colin derived for this experiment. Uh, it is just, uh, just uh, relatively uh, straightforward. BCS theory about uh, recombination of of uh, of uh, quasi particles. I mean, this kind of a work had been done earlier for for superconductors close to TC, but I think this was the first time we really applied it in the regime where we are well well below TC. And 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 in that case, uh, the the theoretical prediction and the experiment did not that much perfectly. But I think in the in the later on when we did an, another experiment, which in fact aimed at looking at parity effect on superconducting islands, there uh, there we could, uh, as you will see, we we got much much closer to to to, to the theoretical predicts. So so this is the actual more recent experiment. This really uh, uh, is uh, uh, acknowledges this uh, this uh, this work that we did earlier. With Collier, and this was done with a much smaller superconducting island connected to normal metal leaks. So now again, we can we can we can just uh, play by populating this superconductor by by uh, by uh, extra quasi particles, and the, uh, the quasi particles have very hard time to get out from this island. They can of course tunnel under some conditions, but but one can really uh, find re regimes where where you can distinguish the recombination rate from, from the tunneling rate. Here is the, just the experimental uh, gate dependence of, of, this, uh, of this kind of a single electron transistor. You can see that there's two E periodicities in there uh, in, the, in the small bias range, which means that the, 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 it's really not poisoned by quasi-particles. At low biases, again, so we have a good control of quasi-particles when we really don't inject large numbers of them. Uh, and then at high biases, it becomes like single electron periodic, meaning that, that there is a large population of quasi particles. So, so to start with, this uh, structure is under good control, and, and then what we can do is we can indeed we can we can again inject quasi particles periodically by by a gate voltage there, so that so that it's 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 uh, the the island is uh, transporting electrons uh, ideally one by one through. But uh, but what happens, in fact, is that in this kind of a gate cycle, when the island itself is superconducting, we end up having uh, extra population of these quasi particles, which do not have enough time at this pumping frequency to to, to relax. So again, when the pumping frequency is relatively large, and I mean this is like one megahertz here, it's not very large, but it's large, then this standard type, well, now standard, uh, which we then worked a few years earlier with Collion, this expression which, which kind of uh, attributes the relaxation, the heat flux from the uh, island to, to, uh, due to the recombination, uh, assuming that there is a thermal pot population of quasi-particles. That kind of a model matches very nicely with the experiment. So this uh, this is kind of the amplitude of the gate, and here is the current through it. So you can see that the experimental data look pretty much uh, non-trivial there. The, the shape of the curve is something you would not intuitively be able to tell immediately what it comes from, because there are many different uh, features in, the, in, the, in, this, in this device. But nevertheless, this kind of a simple, well not simple, but this straightforward model fits the data really almost uh, 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 almost uh, on all its uh, details uh, with just a single uh, prefactor here as a parameter and, and this even this prefactor here is known quite well because these are some material parameters that, that we know. So that was kind of a very pleasing that we can explain by this model quite nicely the, the transport characteristics in this situation. Uh, and, and in this experiment, we indeed we, we then uh, get, unlike in this earlier experiment here, uh, I mean, we had still some discrepancy with that theory, but I would, I would say that 
this experiment was better controlled, and we can we can already see that 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 the prediction, which is this black line from the theory, matches really beautifully the the experiment that we had. So, uh, however, when we go to very low pumping frequencies, things get even uh, get up out of control using this kind of effective uh, model, which, which effectively assumes that there's a thermal population of quasi-particles. So in, in that case, when we pump at frequencies which are of the order of this relaxation rate of quasi-particles, then it, we come to the situation where there is really, there's either just one or two quasi-particles on the island, and, and then they either they uh, relax by tunneling or by recombination, and, and then this kind of model fails completely. You can see that that uh, that uh, for for these three different bias voltages, which are the different colors here, you can see that the model coming from 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 this equation fails totally. But that's natural because indeed it is. Uh, we don't anymore talk about a cloud of uh, quasi particles, but just just uh, one or two of them on the island. And in order to really uh, capture that feature, we had to write down the, the full master equation for, for the quasi-particles, uh, including, indeed, the quasi-particle number and the, and the total charge number on the island. And, and with this uh, model, we also managed to, to, to really, well, I, I wouldn't even say fit, but we managed to match the experimental data quite nicely at the low, low frequencies. So, so I, I'm, I was quite pleased with these measurements from the point of view that that, uh, that we could get a very uh, to this completely non-trivial curves we could get a, a beautiful uh, nice fit uh, with uh, with very a minimum number of fit parameters uh, and and what we get at the end is that uh, in aluminum at low temperatures we have a, a typical recombination rate of uh, quasi particles which is about. Uh, 10 or 20 kilohertz. Okay, so uh, I have just, uh, I guess, 10 minutes to go, or? Five. Five, okay. So then I say... Take... You keep some minutes for questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then this part, second part, which is, uh, this is the most recent part, is about, uh, about this thermodynamics part. So, then I can tell this only, not really deeply scientifically, I, I just tell you about uh, what, what it was. So, so about uh, uh, maybe 2010, 2011, uh, I started to be interested in, in, in uh, uh, non-equilibrium uh, 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 thermodynamics or statistical properties of, of these uh, small electron circuits uh, in, uh, and, and, and uh, and it, it turned out that there is a lot of activity on, on, on similar things in, in soft matter in, 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 uh, and in general on the, on the theoretical side, but nothing was done essentially in, in, in the electronic circuits or in the mesoscopic physics community. And, and together with Collier, we then uh, 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 were discussing about uh, a uh, issue about uh, of these fluctuations and 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 energy control in small systems. I mean that's quite natural, based on what you already saw in the previous slides, of course. And and one of the hot topics in that respect is if one could really realize a Maxwell's demon in 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 a, a uh, in, in, in these small systems. And 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 we proposed a project to European Union. On on uh, on uh, fluctuations and energy control in small systems, and uh, luckily enough, it went through. Although this is really a fundamental project, not really uh, to, uh, geared towards applications, and this was a really uh, a big success from Collier's uh, 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 efforts. And he also found a very nice name for this project, which was Infernos. And, and it comes from information fluctuations and energy control in small systems. So the project started in uh, in the beginning of 2013, and it is really unfortunate that, uh, of course, that uh, that Kolya did not enjoy very much this joint work. However, I mean, uh, he had some some time to work on it, and and and. Uh, 
And of course, the starting point is something we have, we all have seen in, in textbooks of uh, thermodynamics. We, we know about it, what Maxwell's demon is, but really how, how to implement, how to make a system where you can, you can test the, uh, the, um, the interplay of information and, 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 uh, thermodynamics heat in electronic circuits. And, and there were several proposals recently, and one of them is, uh, by Nikolai and, 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 uh, his, uh, colleague Yuri Galperin from Oslo, which appeared just as one of the latest colleagues publications. So, uh, as a, uh, to, uh, to really, uh, uh, put, make the sh story short, we have, this project has been very successful and we are very happy uh, about this because recently we have been able to really make a device where we can essentially uh, uh, do in, with electrons a thing which is called a Zillard engine. So Zillard engine is, is, a, uh, is a system where you have a single particle which is thermalized with, the, with its surroundings and by the information of its the particle's position you can extract useful work or you can extract energy from the from the bath which uh, in this situation where you partition the, the uh, volume into two equal halves you get a, you get an extraction per per working cycle which is equal, equal to kt logarithm 2 the quantity that appears in many contexts like Landauer's principle or, or in, indeed in this uh, Maxwell's team so we, we did it electronically in in our in our system in a single electron box and and, and, and and I can show you just the final result of that so so we <coughs> when we make repetitions of our our uh, uh, this uh, uh, Zillard enzyme of several several repetitions we see that in most of the cycles we extract energy which is of the order of this uh, <coughs> KT logarithm of two from from the bath. Uh, in some cases, we deposit energy, which is much larger, and this is because our information of the of the of the system in this moment of making this decision is not perfect. So we have about 75% of this fundamental limit in here. So this is kind of a <coughs> tribute to to Kolya. The project is going very well, and 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 we we really have uh, got uh, interesting results, and we are enjoying it. Thanks to Collier's uh, preparatory and uh, earlier important work, work on it. So I will uh, I will just uh, I will just since uh, the time is up I, I just uh, wanted to, uh, to to say that that there is this uh, all this thing about this, uh, of this Maxwell demon is somehow uh, uh, can be. Uh, uh, put into a nutshell with a quantity which is the mutual information. So that is how much, uh, how much information you get from the, in the measurement. So it, it can be mathematically formulated like a logarithm of probability that, uh, that you, uh, that you uh, measure that the system is in, in, in uh, probability that the, uh, that the system in, indeed is in the state n, provided your measurement tells that it's in the state m, divided by the probability that, that the system indeed is in, in state n. So this mutual information, which is uh, which is a, uh, an important uh, uh, and well-known quantity, can then be really put back into to study the statistics of uh, of this. Uh, Energy that you can extract from the from the from the bath, and 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 you can or the work that you can, can extract from the bath, and you get something like a generalized second law of thermodynamics or generalized Charsinski equality, which which tells you what sort of uh, average average uh, properties you you get uh, when when you make repetitive experiments, and and this is what we could do. We could, for example, we could see that we extract energy. We, we, we can we can verify that this general Charsinski equality is valid. And just to finish, I just uh, just leave this uh, to you here. Thank you. Okay. Let us thank the speaker. So questions.
about my, Jimon. For my education, this equality, Jarzinski equality, average over what? Yes, yes, precisely. So it's average over, in this case, it's average. You do the same protocol many, many times. Uh -huh. And the average means that you, you take an average over over these repetitions. I see. So yes. it's kind of a... Over a lot of events. Mm -hmm. Okay, more questions? So, let us speak a speak a little bit. Now, it's open break. Ah, don't forget that at 11 there will be the film. Uh, at 11?